the first song that I remember, I think it was Nickelodeon, but it was crazy because we knew that we were gonna drop the song, but Sierra had so many fans and she hadn't dropped music in so long that we were kind of like, put it out there and people were going crazy. Like, yo, she's finally about to drop music. The response was like insane. Once I saw that, I was like, yo, I'm locked in. Like the last year or so, it's been a super tough time for everybody. So it's like, we grabbed from the pain. We kind of grabbed from also the opportunity of like being able to be in one spot for like a while, as opposed to like always traveling and being on the road and stuff like that. So the track Art Show, we just wanted to do something that was like a little bit upbeat, uh, something that was really happy, similar to like the songs from Whack World. I found this sound first, and then I kind of just built everything around it myself. So like the 80s drums kind of gave me like a like Michael Jackson thriller type of sound. And I was like, all right, I can kind of like build from there. So from the 80s drum sound, I went to, I love the bass, so I was like, bass and drums, let me start with the bass next. Um, and I came up with... So that gave me my, like my low end. Uh, after I went through the low end, I was like, I need something else that's gonna stand out. So then I added some a little bit of percussion. I added a conga in there. And a tambourine. The 80s drums, I think, is the thing that's really gonna like, people are gonna listen to it and kind of like get a flashback. Her thing is always like, all right, this is cool, but like, where are we gonna go? And so where she, when she hears something, it's like, all right, what do you have next? And then once I start building it, that builds the ideas for her. There's sometimes where like, I start with one sound and she's just like on it. But then sometimes, you know, you gotta build it up a little bit, um, especially for artists as creative as her. We were talking about doing a stadium song, like something that was like, kind of like women's empowerment mixed with like, like a stadium banger, something that just was like a consistent thump. Like when you hear it in a car, we always like listen to the music in a car. So like something that would just like keep on knocking, like it wouldn't stop. Wack does this thing where like, when she's really hype, she'll get up and like walk to the console. And she like, cause she loves to hear stuff loud. So like everybody's in the studio and just everybody's headed and nodding. And we're looking at each other with that like nasty stank face, like, uh. And so we knew like from there, it was just time to build it. Pieces that came first were, uh, when I found the loop on Splice, uh, I looked up distorted drums, I looked up distorted bass, and this is what I landed with. So I added the snare next. Um, I put a, a filter on it so it didn't sound like a regular snare, like I wanted it to sound like a rim shot, but very muffled. Um, I think it went well with the distorted sound. And then the bass came in. And during this part right here, I did like a little bit of uh, chopping of the sample just to give it a little bit of break up. Um, I didn't want it to be like so monotonous throughout the whole record, so I just wanted to break it up a little bit. And then I added the squeak sound. That's really it. It's always like, I try to add like those little sounds because I don't always use hi-hats because the BPM can kind of mess with your head a little bit. Sometimes it seems faster or seems slower, just depending on how much you add in the back. And so I added a lot of, I'll add a lot of back sounds just to kind of make sure that the, the beat stays like steady. Usually she starts with the hook. And so what, what I usually do is I go out the room and just give her like, I'm really antsy. So like I'll come back when she has like the ideas or whatever. And literally I was out of the room for like three minutes and she recorded the idea for the hook and I heard it and it was just like insane. And I was like, keep going. Like we gotta like, we gotta finish this record. It's always interesting to hear cause like there's sometimes you, in your mind as a producer, you think that the record is gonna go somewhere and the artist should talk about this or whatever. But when you come back and it's like total opposite, that kind of like puts everything like in a weird place, but it's also like an amazing place creatively. Her group of, her core fans are very, very particular with what they like. And I think that we're giving different sides of Tierra, but also we're giving the fans exactly why they fell in love with her at the same time. So I think that you'll hear different sounds, you'll hear a different approach 
when it comes to like the music and even some of the stuff that she's talking about on the project. But overall, I think that the fans will be really happy. I think that it'll bring a whole new audience of people as well. This project is so diverse and it, it tackles everything. It gives these people something that they like, these people something, but I think they're all meshed well enough that everybody's gonna love the entire project.